Hitting early access today, 16th of February. Dimension Drive is a new story-centric shoot-em-up with a comic book sci-fi style and a real-life comic book villain sabotaging its Kickstarter. Early access was kindly provided by two awesome studios and the game was played on Steam, on a Mac. Loading up Dimension Drive, you're presented with Jacqueline Tywood, or just Jack, the protagonist and only a survivor of the Asha Jules attack on her home dimension. Her new home, the planet of Vane, is under attack by the Ashajul, and of course she's the only one who can repel them. Shoot'em ups go back to early 1970s arcade machines, and Dimension Drive ticks all the regular boxes with formation flying enemies and dodging geometric shooting patterns. You know, the stuff we keep coming back to arcade gaming for. The specific mechanic that sets Dimension Drive apart from others is, well, the Dimension Drive. Press a button and Jack teleports her Manticore spacecraft from one dimension to another. The screen is basically split down the middle, with two largely identical but still different maps, and you jump between the two to avoid obstacles, collect pickups, and kill enemies. If there's a laser on one of the maps blocking your path, simply jump to the other map, fly past it, and jump back again. This also goes for dodging end of level bosses and their attacks with two bosses generally mirroring each other in some fashion and where one is shooting, the other generally isn't. Your positions on the two screens are identical and when jumping, you basically have to check that it's safe on the other side. Teleporting into a wall will instantly kill you. This is also the trickiest part, as puzzles and pickups require specific patterns and being a little bit off can trivially end you. To help force you jump between maps or dimensions, you have two energy bars that deplete as you shoot and jumping restores them. Stay too long in one map and you simply run out of ammo. The energy is also linked to your score multipliers, so management of it is crucial when hunting a high score. The basics of the story is pretty run-of-the-mill, but the presentation is very stylized in a comic book fashion. Cutscenes between levels present the story of Jack and the Eschadule, and during gameplay you can pick up so-called data stores unlocking more of the tale. The cutscene dialogue isn't voiced which I think could have been nice, but also fully understand that not only does it add cost and complexity, but risk getting very cheesy. Alongside the game, two awesome studios also plan a more traditional comic book and a concept art booklet, all to expand on the world of Dimension Drive and the infinite universes that our hero Jack can reach. Talking of comic books and villainy, the game went two rounds on Kickstarter after the original campaign was trolled by a fraudulent pledge of 7,000 euros. Thankfully, the team came back for another round after that and managed to secure the complete funding and hitting the stretch goal for local couch co-op. The game is quite pretty between the gameplay and maps and the drawn cutscene images. It also flows quite smoothly even on a slightly old laptop and the only reason our recording of it is a bit subpar is due to us using a bit of not quite recent hardware. Sound effects are simple and effective and there's the occasional voice bits from Jack and her sidekick Vera to help establish the protagonist. The music matches circa an early 1990s Commodore 64 Electro style. Think Chris Hülsbeck's Turrican soundtrack if you're as old as some of us Bamsters. Generally, it stays in the background and doesn't invade your experience, but is a good fit for the visuals and mechanics. Because the game is releasing in early access and this is only a preview piece, I'm refraining from scoring it right away. There's bound to be improvements in the near future as the developers get more feedback and then we'll revisit it. There's also the expected glitches and small irritations, as is in all early access games. Especially as we've initially been previewing a pre-early access release build. These range from small annoyances with control input, to enemies failing to shoot at all, to issues jumping between the two screens. Two awesome studios are aware of them all and working to correct them as we finish up this piece. At this point, the game is definitely worth a play if you're into arcade games, shoot 'em ups or just old school couch co-op and it is absolutely getting a recommender from us. As mentioned, the game is available now and you can find the relevant links to the game in the description below.